Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition. This one looks like it's at the Battle 2020, and it looks as if it's going to be a strictly finals, but for the open division, which means you don't really know the level that you're going to get. Could be people who are intermediate advanced, could be advanced people who are kind of just trying to slip into those lower competitions to get some attention. We don't know, so I'm going to tune in right now. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Open division. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Let the battle begin. The battle begins. Looks like this was literally just posted uh, today. So there's not a whole lot of views on this. Uh, so it's still fresh on a lot of people's minds, what they felt, what they thought. And it's about to be fresh on my mind, too. All right. <clears throat> okay, my standout so far is the couple with the, uh, she's got all black on, he's got yellow socks. And what I'm looking at is how much control they have and restraint. They're not doing a whole lot of movements up front. <clears throat> so this makes me compelled to want to see them more. This is a good one. Here All we go. Right, I don't see any. I'm not familiar with uh, any of these dancers. <clears throat> Lisa, at least upon my first glance. Fighting on the red corner, Simon and Elsa. Here we go. Battle format. Anouk. Clément. Okay, so as I as expected, this doesn't mean because it says open that these dancers aren't good. <clears throat> Might I say that couple could have been in the other competition for the pro. Okay, so what I like so far is this couple because there's a little bit of weirdness in the movements, but I don't see that impacting the control element of their dancing. They're doing different stuff. Emphasizing the music, the timing. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> All right, so the second round goes to the couple that was on the right. Uh, and for me, the first round goes to the couple on the left, which was really, really tough. So if I were to balance it, my personal preference for style, um, which is not objective, I would go to the couple on the left. Um, when it comes to the control and the technique, I would say the couple on the right. They had a little bit more control so I'm not going to sabotage creativity for the control. I think it's control first, then creativity. So ultimately, I picked the couple on the right. Against on the red corner, Quentin and Lucia.
All right. <clears throat> yes. Okay, so for me, so far the couple on the right appears to have a little bit more control of the technique at this tempo. They came straight out swing dancing saying, we can swing out this fast. And I like that. <clears throat> Not to say this couple on the left can't, but so far they haven't shown me they can do the basic uh, control of some of the most classic moves. Okay, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> For me, uh, the couple on the right, <clears throat> better selection of move choice by the leader to set up his partner so that you can actually see the follower. Uh, her skill set. Judges, one, two, and I'm going to say the couple on the right. And this is Red going to the final. Quentin and Lucia. All right, let's see. <clears throat> All right, so let them breathe a little bit by announcing what the winner will have. All right, let's see. <clears throat> so, yeah. Of course. So the final strictly. <laughs> Open final winner will have two pass for crossover in Istanbul. All right. Yes. And winning passes for other events. That's always fun. My first year swing dancing, I went to so many events. It was like 30 events. I kept winning competitions and passes. I didn't want to have to pay for any of that stuff, so it was worth the drives and sleeping on floors and... All that good stuff. <clears throat> All right, let's see what happens with this group. Very excited. Can we get a bit more excitement in the room? Let's have a bit of a noise. Here we go. It's the final. Come on, audience. Give them some love. Okay. Core competency. Moving fast. The tempo. Swing outs. A little bit of Charleston. Okay. So, so far, just on the element of control, this couple is ahead. They're not really doing anything to the timing of the music to make the music stand out. Yes, yes, yes. So for me, um, <clears throat> this one is a little bit more of a clear winner to the couple on the right. Um, let's see. Uh, 
can't remember everybody's names. It's the tough part, writing things down and having to try to see everybody at the same time. Don't want to miss anything. So for me, clearly, a couple on the right, and I'll be surprised if any judges go to the couple on the left, unless they're just haters. Making your minds. <clears throat> One, two, three. And this is round. Okay, so that was close. <coughs> Congratulations. That's interesting. I don't know what that means. So, uh, red, green, I don't know how many people, I don't know really who won. That's confusing to me. <laughs> that was really confusing ending. Because for me, uh, the couple on the right. Clearly the winners. Let's talk about this. So let's let's just talk about this one. Just unpack it a little bit. <clears throat> There's so many things that I appreciate about the open level, uh, strictly competitions. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have this hacking cough. I feel like I have the harangue flu uh, for the last three weeks. So I've just I'm getting over it, and I still got a little bit of cough. Uh, in my body, so forgive me for that. But <clears throat> the thing I like about the open is that it is less pretentious as the professional stuff. It's less safe. People aren't 100% polished on everything. So of course I judge the, the how well they can control the technique, number one, because clearly they're learning what this is all about. Learning how to swing out, learning Texas Tommy, tuck turns, some Charleston, throwing in some moves that are, you know, some of their favorite heroes moves. But at the same time, I'm kind of in this weird dichotomy where I look at that and I say, yes, those things have to be there. But I also look to see if I can get a glimpse of who the dancer really is before they become too polished. Because something happens between this level of open and advanced where dancers who have a very distinct personality all of a sudden have amnesia. They just totally forget who they were because of all of the classes and all of the competitions and all of the different feedback or lack thereof that makes them want to all of a sudden dance like everybody else around them or the hero of the month. This is just weird how that happens between the open and advanced. And so the, the open is so appealing because you still get that snapshot of who they are. And hopefully I get to see more people grasp a hold of who they are and, and start to get a little bit more confident then as opposed to gaining their confidence once they become more advanced on a technical standpoint. Because it's kind of hard to go back to who you were when you first started dancing. All that excitement, all that joy. Um, you thought you were awesome until you go back and watch your video and you're thinking, oh, what was I thinking? I thought I was the man until, you know, I messed up in that competition and I started, you know, getting some feedback and taking private lessons and now I look just like my heroes. But yet, there's something missing. It's you. So I got to give it to all of the dancers who were in this competition, who were just being themselves. My favorite couple uh, was the couple that I first mentioned. She had black on, he had black on, but he had yellow socks. And what I liked about them is their slow tempos. There was something about them moving slowly allowed me to see a little bit more of their personality. I don't think they were as comfortable moving when the tempo was faster. Um, I think a lot of dancers at this level have that problem. Um, not for everybody. Some couples are more comfortable moving faster, but then when it's slower, they you can kind of see the, the lack of control of the technique. Just kind of weird how that works out sometimes. But that couple was my favorite. Just because I got a chance to see a little bit of them, and I liked them. There were some weird movements the leader was doing with his footwork, with his upper body not moving a whole lot. Don't know if he was doing that intentionally, but it looked good to me. Follower was kind of reading some of those movements and saying, yeah, I like that. I'll, I'll embellish that rhythm a little bit to the clarinet. 
And it was just, it was fun. It was playful. I got a chance to see something fresh. The other three couples for me were good at different things. Clearly the ones that won for me were the ones that had the best control. Um, but ultimately the one that went in my heart at this level is not necessarily the one who can be technically proficient because that is kind of expected. That is your journey. It is expected to be climbing and, and getting better. You're going to keep going to workshops. You're going to keep social dancing. So I don't expect anything less than to become more technically proficient. It's the, it's the easy go-to thing that's safe. But the part that's hard once your awareness has been expanded is to go back to what it used to be and get a snapshot of who you really are. So I'm judging in a different mindset when I look at opens. I look for the technical part, but I don't look for it too much because I shouldn't expect them to be too good at this level. What I'm looking for is that balance of have they gotten the confidence of who they are at this level? Are they able to show me a little bit of distinct personality and yet still do the control a little bit? So for me, even though the winners won, they didn't win for me because I, it was okay. It was just technically proficient. When it was time for them to do some moves that were different to say that, hey, look, we can do the technique. We're going to do something different. Nope. They just did the moves that I'm sure many of the judges would say, yeah, thanks for that. I appreciate it. That's my move. And that's kind of like, it's like kissing up to the teacher, bringing the teacher an apple every day, you know? For me, I, I appreciate it. I think everybody gets flattered when you see someone do a move that you do. But at the same time, there's something that's hollow about it. And I want to see people who don't care what the judges think. They want to come out with their style. They want to come out with their personality, present it. It may not be 100% polished, but that's okay in my book. Those are some of the best dancers that you will always remember are those who have a very distinct personality. You can look at their silhouette of their swing out and you know who it is. That's what's important. So what do you guys think about this open strictly? I thought it was quite fascinating. I think it's more fun looking at these types of competitions in many cases than the highest level competitions that are typically the, the highest levels, typically the all star level. They're the ones that are still fighting to prove they have something to say. The invitational level is like, I made it. I'm in the club. You know, I don't have to compete unless, you know, the person before me is really throwing it down. So there's a little bit of a passive aggressive nature to it that is a little disingenuous because I want to be entertained by the ones who supposedly are the best of the best. I never let my guard down in those kind of invitations. I don't care if it's a teacher demonstration or not. I'm coming out swinging with the hardest stuff you've ever seen just so people who are at the lowest level will go, okay, that's what I want to work to. I don't ever want to just glorify the things that everybody is supposed to be able to do. Why do we do that? It's kind of like bringing Lindy Hop down on our level. As long as it feels like it's getting out of our control, we just bring it back down to our level and, and over-hype the things that should be easy for us to do. And I say easy because this, the stuff that we're learning is 80 plus years old, done by a bunch of teenagers at the time. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, I look for technical proficiency first. But mostly at this level, I'm looking for artistry. I want to see speciality. I want to see personality. I want to see all of those things that most dancers lose at this level because they get into the circuit of taking classes and everybody chiseling away the real them. So don't forget who you are. Please keep being you. You do you. That's what we say here in America. You do you. Work on the technique, but don't do too much of it because it's not that hard. If you guys are struggling with it, you want me to prove it to you? I spent over 10,000 hours to try to strip all of this away so that people can realize, well, wait a minute, what are the most fundamental basic things? And are you kidding me? Those are the things? That's it? That's all I got to be able to do? Not understand, but be able to do them and I've mastered the technique? That's it? Yeah. Yeah, I did all the hard work. But you can have access to that. And I encourage you to check that out. I got over five hours of additional stuff 
just to help you understand how simple IndieHop can be. Yes, it takes five hours because we're spending more time processing those ideas to help you come to the realization to say, oh, wow, he's right. I've been in this scenario. Oh, yeah, I've been in that scenario. Oh, boy, now I know how to fix myself without always having a teacher on my back to tell me if it's technically proficient or not. So that's my hope for you is that you can get over this idea that it's super hard, even at the open level, to start maturing and become one of those ones in the invitational level. That's easy. Super easy. The hard part is being unique. And that's you. Being you. That's the hard part. So don't lose that. So if you guys want to check that out, click one of those links below. You can see what it's like to be part of our community. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this competition in the comments section. Let me know what you think. What do you look for in a competition as an audience member? Are you a judge watching this too? What do you look for? Let me know your opinion. I love hearing your opinion. It's great. We don't have enough of that in today's society. So just share your idea. Have a reason why. And let's exchange our ideas and, and our diversity. That's the unity we can have is that we can actually talk about what we believe, what we like, and why without threatening to destroy the world. So with that said, if I don't see you in one of my classes online, hopefully I get a chance to see some of your comments in the reaction video comment section. See you guys in the next video. Take care.